three trillion nine hundred and thirty four billion five hundred million. That's the number of pictures that were taken by humans in 2018. Pictures have taken over the world. If a picture is worth a thousand words, what do these pictures say about us? That we're obsessed with cats? <laughs> that we only smile and make kissy faces? That when your kids go off to college, your puppy becomes more important than your children? To understand photography and its intention and its impact, we really have to go back to the beginning. And it's not that far ago. 1838, the busy streets of Paris, one of the first photographs ever taken. It was taken by a man named Louis de Gore, who, in, whose intention was the intention of many people nowadays. He wanted to make money. Photography was inevitable. Humans documented the world around them on the walls of caves, with paintings, and with the coming chemical revolution and the development of optics, chemical photography was inevitable, and he was in the right place at the right time. In fact, an accident is the reason he developed photography. A broken mercury thermometer in a cabinet developed an image in a way he had no idea would happen. Many photographers died because of the mercury exposure later, but that's a different story. So his intention was to make money, and thankfully, the intention of the French government was to share this gift with the world. They bought the patent, and the world saw photography. And what was the impact of that photography on the world at this time? You could now remember your relatives. There was a rush to bring your recently deceased child or your recently deceased parent to a photography student studio to take a picture of them so that you could remember them forever. You would get a picture of your beloved and stitch it into your jacket if you were in the military, right over your heart. That was one of the positive impacts of photography. But photography was a catastrophe for a large portion of the population. That catastrophe was for artists at the time. Artists acted as our documentarians. They painted portraits, they painted landscapes, and suddenly along comes this thing that anybody could do that would replace them. Art had to change. Art could no longer be about documentation. Art had to become something else. Art had to have a different intention. And we saw that almost immediately in the same city that photography was invented. The Impressionists began to play with art. They were ridiculed for their art as being crude, terrible, but they really captured something about the way humans interact with light. Scientists saw photography as a godsend. They now believed that they had a way of capturing objective truth. But let's look at this photograph. This is, one of the, this is the first photograph of a person. You can barely see them in there, but they're down there getting their shoe shined. This is actually also a photograph of a busy Paris street. You don't see anything in the street because the photograph took too, so long to expose that anything that moved wasn't captured. And so buried in this is the untruth of photography, but also our ability to see the unseen. And that's what science grabbed onto. And science, this is Francis Galton, he's the He's Darwin's cousin, and he had good intentions. He was a scientist, and he wanted to use photography to understand criminals. And he believed that criminals had a look about them. And if he took pictures and mugshots of criminals, he could composite them together to create what a criminal looks like and help police identify criminals before they committed crimes. We now know that his intention was based in racism, and stereotype. He didn't understand that at the time. But the impact of this was huge. The impact of him, along with the, the burgeoning field of genetics, led to eugenics, and in many ways led to the Holocaust, and led to forced sterilizations here in the United States. The impact of that photography and that thoughtless intention had huge ramifications. Now, I, as a scientist, I take pictures of different things. 
Anybody? Fruit flies, they're horrible, they're nasty, they're in your kitchen. I capture them, rip out their ovaries, and squish them and take pictures. The intention is not to hurt fruit flies. The intention for me is to understand the molecular basis of DNA replication and how chromosomes are packaged. And fruit flies happen to be a great way of doing that. And so I take hundreds and hundreds of pictures with the intention to understand that deeper molecular mechanism so that, it ha so that we can say something about cancer development and human development. The impact for scientists comes in the sharing. You are not a scientist if you don't share, if you don't add to the body of human knowledge or add to the truth, in quotes, that is out there. And so I, I've been doing this for two decades, and then I had a crisis. And that crisis starts with a T. That crisis is tenure. Some of us here have experienced that. Some of us wish to experience it. I would recommend that you think carefully about it. <laughs> And my crisis led to me doing something different with my technical skills. Instead of peering down at the small, I decided to look at the big and ask different questions, not scientific questions, but questions about my motivation and questions about my place in the universe. And I did it because I'm a scientist in the same way. I had intention to have impact. The first impact you have is on yourself huddled under my tel telescope out on cold nights, looking at the night sky. I wanted to, to, to share these images with people. I ran into some roadblocks at the beginning. Uh, my partner at the time said, why don't you just look at Hubble images? They're much better than yours. <laughs> and I, I retorted that using your own equipment is always more fun, which is very true. And so I worked hard to do this, and it helped me explore my core values of wonder and curiosity. I wonder, when I look up in the night sky and at all of you, that the entire universe with mathematical certainty was no bigger than the diameter of a photon. We know this. I know that when I take a tiny little straw and look up in the night sky, in every field of view is 100,000 galaxies. I know that when I go to the beach and pick up a single grain of sand. That for every grain of sand on this entire planet, there are 10,000 suns in this universe. That blows my mind. I want to explore that curiosity. And so I shared this with others. I put them on gallery walls, expecting everybody else to react the same. I mean, my truth has to be your truth. And that turns out not to be true. <laughs> Some people saw jellyfish. Some people saw God. They all saw something different, and they all walked away with something different. Now, if that isn't what art is, I don't know. Intention and impact. But you need to think carefully about both of those things. Some, this is the jellyfish. I don't see it, but maybe you do. Some people see pandas. And so... I decided that I wanted to know more. And so I enrolled in an MFA program at East Carolina University, and I learned, the first thing I learned was that art is hard. <laughs> and that's also the first lesson I reject, that art is not hard. We can all do it if we have intention to think about our impact. I then went on to go to the roots of photography to explore different, different things. I, this, is a, this is wet plate collodion. This is a, development, a technology that was developed in 1851. And in my walks in the woods, I decided to start looking down. I call this captured carbon. On the forest floor is littered with amazing bits and pieces discarded by plants and animals. And we as humans walk over them, we crunch them, we drive over them in our car. We don't care about them. But if I take photos of them and create tiny little images, the size of the images that people put of their beloved on their chest when they went into war, people pick these up and they cherish them in a way they should be cherishing the natural world. So my intention and my impact 
seem to be knowable. I think they work out pretty well. And I continue to do more of this. But you do not need specialized equipment to do this. I challenge you to just look at the photos you take. Look at your Instagram feed and ask questions about yourself. It tells you what you care about. Is that the message you want to send? I just, with my smartphone, this is another series that I've done. You guys all have a camera. This is me being intentional about documenting what I see in a single stairwell at East Carolina University. Some call it the magic stairwell. I call it the stairwell of death. <laughs> this is the interface between the urban and the wild. And these insects have been trapped in this stairwell going up and down stairs that go nowhere for them. And I share this with everyone to highlight the beauty and the ew of nature, but also to ask them to look carefully at what they see around them. So when you go back and you think about the power you have now with social media and the power of you to share what you take pictures of, I challenge you to think about your intention. Is your intention to make the world think that nothing's wrong with you and that everything's hunky-dory? Think about it when you post those things. Go back and ask yourself, what impact do I have on the world around me? Am I adding to the truth and the well-being in the world, or am I taking away from it? Thank you very much. <music>